Royal Singing Band, Bamea Yom, now we are in your Kuma Aaron, I can kind, Chiro Konkona Maye. Oh. 
yo ebra die sade che mia e frivo sade sa mia e frivo me da wa se me da wa se ora ye sue una wa yo Happy Sabbath, church. Please, can we all open our Bibles to Matthew 28, 18 to 20? I read. And Jesus said to them, Go and do not make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and lo i am with you always even to the end of the age amen amen na yesu ba ba be kasa chere won se o do soro ni asase se tumi nyina ma me inti mon konko ya ma ma nyina mesia fo na mo mo won su n she eja ene oba ene won kronkron din mu na mo chere chere won se oni die ma she won nyina so na hwe me ni mo ho and Nanyana, Edicusi, if you are a very radiant assembly, Amen. A happy Sabbath to you all. Mamma Yon Kodo. God is good. Yami ye. My God is good. Minyami ye. God is good. Yami ye. God is excellent. I want us to look at uh, Joshua chapter 23, verse 1 to 3, and it reads, And it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. What did he do? He said, this Joshua's farewell speech to his people. He said, and Joshua called for all Israel and for their elders and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers and for their, and said unto them, I'm old and stricken in age. And ye have seen all that the Lord your God have done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that have fought for you. Amen. Joshua had every reason to glorify himself. Now Joshua, 
But he realized that all that had happened in his time was God who had messed. So all that has happened to us right now is God who had mercy on the people of God here in Reading. We couldn't have done anything without him. Now from what our church pastor said from what Pastor Sam, Sam David said. And then the also for Sam and David Saka. Of SEC said. And then the also for Diana. They've actually given the history of the church. So I'm not here to bother you more with more history. You already know why we are here. You already know how we have come so far. So I'm going to give you a brief, a brief, a brief, a brief uh, narrative where. There is a missing link. It was Pastor George Daddy and his church, Slough Church. So for that, the is not sorry, that Slough. conceived the idea that they should plant a church in Reading. So our mothers, Slough Church, it we salute you. And when we had lived, when we had stayed as nomadic people, moving from one place to another, one place to another, then the leaders of the church decided to form a committee in 2012. And the committee was our able elder Fred Quay. And we had also Maxwell as the as the foreman or the project manager. And God gave us our brother James Rosie, an architect from, from Frimley. At that time, we could not have hired any architect. He came, he offered his, uh, his, his services Free for us. And together with all the church members, we have managed the work which should have cost us two point five thousand pounds. Because we relied on our own efforts and our own. Uh, strength and then you of the mercy of our God. All these revisions that you see, these beautiful things that you see, and have such a by a dying, you betray me and I know as a little bit less than 700,000. Uh, this is what Redding Ghana has done through the power. Of God that we are so aye. So I will continue to say thank you, members of this church. And if you ask me how we came by this, I will tell you we are not the only ones who did it. I will tell you because we prayed fervently to God. If you say our prayer team and at the time. It was our brain also. The leader was Naomi Ananibia, who is now in the United States. And together with all others that are in the After the hundred days of prayer, the South Ingra Conference, we added 10 days more and prayed and prayed and prayed. And God answered. So I tell you, if you don't believe in prayers, God because that gave us the building that we have. And when we go to South England Conference, they they name I shall never forget in my life. Pastor Sam Davis, I will never forget. Pastor, I, will, I want to take you through the memory lane. 
When you were elected president of Sabrina, I was there. I was a member of the committee. And I remember when we in his uh, acceptance speech. He said, he said that was the time he was he was uh, going to have a wedding anniversary. And university. had messed up your day. Uh, yeah, was for I remember that. that. He came here last time. I for and, and when he was here, he, he, he told a lot about uh, good hygiene and uh, food and all that. And he attacked our Jolof. Then so he messed up my appetite that day. But before he left, he said this. Oh, you have bees in your in your, your menu. Say, and that is also good. That gave me the and eat my, my, my meal that day. So we are still so. friends, Pastor. It was so we for. are still friends. Yeah, yeah, now for. So ladies and gentlemen, there are individuals which I know later they are going to be acknowledged. Our, our brother Gregory here, this man, has done a lot for us. Uh, he has done a lot for us. He has done a lot for us. He has done a lot for us. The way we, 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 we pay him is. It's so simple. Just, when you get the money, just give me a little that you can. And he has done every, almost so many things that we have. The building itself, he's done a lot. And if you if you ask me, we, we have architects here in the church. Na se u busa also for David say wah architects say wah asafuimo. Oh no, so many of them. All these young people. He, you've done immensely. So, yeah, you done so. so I would say, God bless you all. And God continue to unite. That's more important. Now, you know, if anybody in here is planning to to have a church building, so be per se that be or not. So we are sorry, Diane. What you need, the one here paying you is fervent prayers. Empire, I more than. I also, you need people who are committed. Now, if you any power, what to watch at home? Who are ready to dip into their pockets? Oh, now, nah, why are you crowded? So, I do on Sabbath's co but to know you. We were told that if we could raise about 175,000, this car that will board in and I can say, I suffer here more home or day. Top it up. Now, we are conference, you better come home. And it took ready. Two months to raise that money. Yeah, the bosom may be no red and PJSK. In the part of the one for you, Messica. People were giving money. In the part, Messica. I remember one person got up and said, Myself and my wife, we will give 10,000. We'll be sorry, or any year, a general home, mamma, or pim and pim do. And it's God who has given us that. So I pray that we continue to fight like that. We will be strong. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor Jonathan. Yeah, before Pastor Dr. Say preach, and also for Dr. Sebe Kasano, we're going to do some exercise. We want to appreciate some of the members and other people who sacrifice for this church to be where the first and comfort upon men who lead us. So, penny kufia je oni ni nyaba comfort. Omuni did you may enim. Happy Sabbath, Church. Mamo yonkodo.
We thank the church. It's a privilege for giving us this opportunity to lead this session. Um, of the event, I think we will start off by um, quoting from Ruth. Chapter 1, verse 8. Simple, short verse. And it says, And may the Lord reward you for your kindness. So on behalf of the church, we're just saying, anybody that has contributed to this edifice, edifice, that is being dedicated to the Lord today. May the Lord reward you. It's Voltaire that said that appreciation is a wonderful thing. It makes what is excellent in others belong to us all. So all those, some names are being singled out for a special mention. As Voltaire said, it makes what is excellent in us also belongs to all of us. And so we celebrate with um, those that are being mentioned specifically today. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. Collectively as a church, yeah, may God yeah, reward yeah. us and thank you all for your contribution. We will, um, we've got some names that um, the church leadership um, has asked that we um, present them with some um, gift or certificates for today. I think to help us um, do that, we will ask, um, Pastor, can you um, come forward, please, to help us present our first set of certificates? You have five so far, but can you hear now, boy? Now you need you, may. So the first set of certificates is going to our pastors, um, who the church wants to show a special appreciation. The D Kano, yeah, they may have so far the Achre Yendo, a war, the Omaya Amasa Fui. First on the list, um, we all give a special amen to our immediate past church pastor, Pastor George Daddy. Amen. Amen. Sorry, Shall we be on our feet, please? Thank you very much, um, Pastor. I think the standing ovation says it all. The church is greatly appreciative of your effort. Uh, and See, I'm sorry, I'm also for. Next, next on the list is Pastor Dr. and Mrs. Imanol Osei.
Um, the last for our pastors that is being presented with these gifts and certificates is Pastor and Mrs. and Sam Davis. Thank you very much, um, Pastor, for um, doing that for us. So now we move on to, um, again, some members in this church who have been um, asked for a special mention. For this session, we'll call, we'll call the um, First Lady of the House to help us to present these certificates to, to them. Okay, um, so first on the list is um, Elder Eugene Mitchell. Next on the list, Elder Kwasi Ajman. My apologies, I've been asked that all the elders are to come forward. Those that have been mentioned, they are to come forward with their wife um, to receive their presentation. Um, so I apologize for the first two. Um, so we have Elder and Mrs. Fred Quay. Elder and Mrs. George Frimpong. Mrs. Kojo Bosman.
Next is Elder and Mrs. Philemon Ananidia. Next, Elder and Mrs. Samuel Jemphy. Next on the list is Elder and Mrs. Maxwell Ampau. Next on the list is Mr. and Mrs. John Tre. Next on the list is Miss Melody Bar. Amen. And next on the list is our own presenter, Elder Nana Kofi Eje. Now do our dignitaries um, who have graced us with our presence and obviously they've had a hand in helping us to get this far. So for our first on the list we'll have His Excellency Papa Owusu Ankuma, the Ghana High Commissioner.
Mr. Gregor Ivonko. Mrs. Althea Roskamps. I don't think she's here today. Um, Mrs. Abigail Wright. And Elder James Rhodesy. Yeah. Elder and Mrs. James Rhodesy. Apologies. Okay, we, we will finish off with the last presentation last but not the least as they say and that goes to Mrs. and Mr. Sarah Paul Mensah so can have Mrs. Sarah Paul Mensah accompanied by um, see if this present I understand that they're not here so we make this presentation to the daughter comfort to take it on behalf of the parents So on behalf of the church, the leadership and everyone, we want to say a big thank you to the Reading Ghana Church. We thank all our supporters and all the people that have helped us over the years to come this far. We are all winners together and may God bless every one of us. Amen. Amen. We like to invite the church choir to give us a song of meditation and after that you're going to hear the voice of Pastor Emmanuel Osei. Church I'm sorry, we are here to give you a song of meditation. We are inviting the whole world to come and see what God has done. It's not by our might or power, but by His Spirit. So we'll sing Mumra Meshe Die Unyame Aye.
To His Excellency, Titrani Excellency, Papa Ousu Ankoma, Papa Ousu Ankoma, the Ghana High Commissioner to the UK, opinion of and so to my uh, fellow ministerial colleagues, and now for Minyan Masofo, and of course, my own president, President Sam Davis, Titrani Albert Chemo, or so for Sam Davis. It was David who said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. David in Okaya said, Today is a joyful day. I am particularly excited and thrilled to see what God has done. Here at the Red and Ghana. Red and Ghana. I well recall what this place looked like many years ago. Now, 
And I remember the discussions that took place before the acquisition of this place. In fact, if I were to go back a little further, I remember actually doing an evangelistic series when we were nomads looking for places of worship. And so today as I stand here, my heart is filled with joy and appreciation to God for what he has done. Not only has God brought us from a very long way, but God has blessed us immensely. If we were to stop and calculate the expense involved in acquiring this facility and making it what it is, agree that it is only because of the grace of God. And so places rightfully called the Grace Center. And so in the next few minutes, I wish to share something about the grace of God to his church. The Bible tells us that when Jesus entered into Caesarea Philippi, his disciples came to him and Jesus asked them a certain question. Jesus asked this question. Uh, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they responded, well, Peter was the one who responded, well, uh, Petro, some say you are John the Baptist. Others say you are Elijah. But still others say Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. And I say, um, then Jesus brought the question home to his disciples. Who do you say that I am? And that's a question which confronts each one of us in our Christian journey. It's, it's not so much what other people say about Jesus, but it's who is Jesus to me personally. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. To which Jesus responded, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I'm saying to you that your name is Peter, but upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, Jesus referring to himself says, listen, I am the rock upon which the church is going to be built. But the church will come under attack. But Jesus has given the assurance that the gates of hell will never prevail against the church yes, of the yes, living God. It's, it's not because we have good pastors in God's church. It's not because we have faithful members in God's church. 
the gates of hell will never prevail against the church of God because it is built upon the rock Jesus Christ. So today we rejoice as we look at this fine edifice which is dedicated to the glory of God. As beautiful as it is, as wonderful as it is, the church is not the building. We, human beings, members of the body of Christ, we are the church of God. So, with this grace center, when people from the community come into the house of God, they want to see Christ in you and in me. Since we are the church of God, I want to describe God's church from its inception right down to this day in which we live. When Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible tells us that he asked his disciples to go into Galilee to meet him at a certain mountain. And as the disciples obeyed the command of Jesus, they they went to this mountain where they met our Savior. Now mark well, we are describing or we are looking at God's church. They were only 12 in number when they made their way to Galilee. The Bible tells us that when they met Jesus, in fact, let us read the text itself. It's in Matthew chapter 28. And I'm going to begin reading from verse 16. We're describing God's church. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. So the 11 disciples, because by this time, Judas is no longer with the disciples. They go to Galilee they meet Jesus and as soon as they see Jesus, the Bible says they prostrated themselves and worshipped Jesus. But friends, what is significant is found in verse 17. The Bible says as they worshipped him, some doubted. In other words, 
even after three and a half years of walking with Jesus, after three and a half years of seeing and being eyewitnesses to the miracles of Jesus, after three and a half years of listening to the teachings of Jesus, after witnessing the glorification of Jesus and the power of his resurrection. The Bible says when they prostrated themselves and worshipped Jesus some of the Bible says some doubted is it possible to be a member of God's church to have walked with Jesus for so many years and still struggle with doubt. This was the church. The Bible says, as they worshipped him, some still but what is significance is the grace of God. Even though some doubted, the Bible says Jesus still says to them, Go and make disciples for me. Go and and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But hold on a second. Some of them are That's all right. The grace of God says, even if you have doubts, go nevertheless and make disciples. Friends, none of us are perfect. If you say, the, the church of God was never perfect. Here were the disciples who had a personal encounter, a walk with Jesus. And they still suffered with doubt. But the grace of God was sufficient. And God still entrusted them and them to go and make disciples. This story is so significant that, that even all the gospel writers make a record of this. In Mark's gospel, chapter 16, Mark says this about the characteristics of the early church when given this mandate. Mark 16 and we're reading from verse 14. Bible says later, he, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief and the hardness of heart because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. Then he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. So, did you catch this other characteristics of the early church? Mark's gospel tells us that Jesus rebukes their unbelief and their hardness of their hearts. The hardening of one's heart 
is when one recognizes the awesome power of God at work and still chooses to turn their backs on God. Perhaps the best example of one heart, one hardening their hearts can be found in the Old Testament. When Moses went to stand before Pharaoh and spoke to the king and said to Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord. Moses called Pharaoh Let Israel go. Pharaoh responded, Who is the Lord? Pharaoh, I, I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And so God demonstrated his power to Pharaoh, which crippled the whole economy of Egypt. Plague after plague and whenever the plague struck, Pharaoh will call to the man of God and summon Moses to his presence. Pharaoh will say to Moses, I have sinned, Moses. Please call upon God to remove the plague. When the man of God prayed, God God heard the prayers of of his son. The plague was stayed. But Pharaoh hardened his heart and refused to let Israel go. The hardening of one's heart is when one sees the demonstration of God's power and still rejects the authority of God. In the passage that we are reading in the Gospel of Mark, the Bible says Jesus rebukes his church because of the hardness of their heart. My brothers and my sisters, God's church is never a perfect being. We all have flaws within our characters. Nevertheless, the grace of God empowers us and commissions us to go and to make disciples for Jesus What we are learning about God is this. God does not call the qualified. Rather, God qualifies those whom he calls. With all the flaws within our character, we don't deserve to be ministers of God. Remember, in Matthew's gospel, they were doubters among the church members. According to Mark, there were some church members who were hardening their hearts. Imperfect. Yet, yet God still says, go and make disciples for me. Oh, my friends, this is the God whom we serve. We don't profess to be perfect. 
but we can go and make disciples only because of God's grace. The fact that we are here doesn't make us better than those outside. This building, the Grace Center, is a place where the community can come in and also experience the grace of God. And so the drunkard can come into this place. And by the grace of God, will become sober again. The adulterer can come into the grace center and by the grace of God can become faithful once again. Sinners can come into the grace center and can be transformed by the grace of God. My brothers and my sisters, this building is God's building. And it is God who says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Luke, in his gospel, if you read what Luke has to say about yeah. the characteristics of God's church. Now, Luke has in, in chapter Luke chapter um, twenty-four. Luke has a and reading from verse. Um, let me see now. From verse twenty-four. Now, Luke has a Let me just just confirm that. Sorry, I beg your pardon. For, verse forty-eight, rather. Verse forty-eight. Luke twenty-four. Okay, so we're reading. Um, the Bible says, uh, in fact, let me take it from verse um, 30, 36. Now, as they said these things, now, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. And he said to them, peace be unto you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. And, and he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Handle me and see for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. Some of us are like these disciples. We are frightened and terrified in going and making disciples and sharing Jesus with If you are that way, then my friends, you are in good company. Because the early church suffered with this as well. So, doubters People who harden their hearts. People who fret and are afraid and terrified. These all are members of God's church. And yet God says, Go and make disciples. Oh, my brothers and my sisters. Oh, my brothers and my sisters. As we trace the history of the church throughout the ages. The Bible tells us that in the last day, God's remnant church will also be proclaiming the everlasting gospel. But, 
But this gospel, my friends, is grace-centered. And so when we preach, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. The message of the judgment hour is a message of hope. And semi and semi many that's all. Because we know the judge. If you say your name was in no. We are saved by his grace and his grace and alone. When we go and preach in this case, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And Babylon Come out of her, my people. Let us remember that God has people in Babylon. So they can come into the grace center and receive the grace of God. When we preach that if any man worships the beast and his image and receives his mark in his forehead in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of God which is poured out without Mixture. It's a message of grace that God is extending to this world. My brothers and my sisters, we are living on borrowed time. God has his children all over this place called Redding. And God is calling them to come into the grace center and receive grace. Grace. Amazing grace. That saved a wretch like you and I. Oh yes, my friends. We were once lost, but praise God. We were dead in our sins and trespasses. But we have been made alive because of God's grace. It is grace and grace alone that has saved you and I. Let us welcome everybody into the grace center. May this be our experience in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. Yeah, before we sing the closing song. You know, when we were um, giving some gifts and appreciation to some special people, if we intentionally decided to leave one person alone. Because I wanted to do it myself. Because it's very, he's very special and very important person in this church. In fact, he is our father. In fact, he is our, our everything in this church. So at this time, I want to invite Elder David Yeboa and Sabri, his wife to come Sabre. forward. I saw Penyini, and then the Yeboa. In fact, I've changed his name to Lord David Yeboa. And said, "May the Lord do a mano." Said the groom, "Aye, aye, no." Where is Mama Gladys? <laughs> Mama Gladys is not here. Uh, Mama Gladys, I'm saying, "Wetiyan and I so kakra." I think she's very busy. Martha preparing some food for. <laughs> well, yeah, Martha will feel or see if you fear my. And because Edward uh, David is a special person 
for this church, I will I would like to invite the first lady of the conference to do the presentation for me. And to the conference, yeah, ma'am, I will die. I don't know. I pay you, sir. Or the actual day, but my yeja, as a for yeja. Yeah, so you can do the presentation now. Like um, your church here in Reading, I also love Elder Yebo very, very much. So, so I support this with all my heart. So I'm going to take a look at you and I'm going to take a look at you and I'm going to take a look at you. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Uh, I want to. I want to thank you all. Please, 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 don't be disappointed when you go to heaven and you don't meet me there. So we call heaven now. Well, whom ya emano and how? But we are going to meet you there. And so yamiti ibishia. Okay, shall we all stand and take our closing hymn from Mama Yenya Yen Sorry? Three four one to God be the glory. Na yam fire nyom and you nyam Kenya me. And after the benediction, we will remain on our seat for the youth to come and then take the flags off before. Yeah, bumpa ye chat to ni we are me pam chom me tenasi ko my bra and me bruno to sa no ma be you mo franka ye e free ha ako. And don't forget about this afternoon program. Launching their CD, then we want everyone to come and support them in this uh, special. We are we are near we are singing band and a choir. We must see see you know we are more than a day. You hear music, and then we more anti more better actually. Amen. To God be the glory.
Oh God, our Father, all glory, praise, and honor goes to your name. You have been good to the Red in Ghana Seventh-day Adventist Church. We praise you for who you are. And so now in benediction, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.
Oh, 